AQA GCC Chemistry Topic 9 Chemistry of the Atmosphere. The composition and evolution of the Earth's atmosphere. For 200 million years, the proportions of different gases in the atmosphere has been very much the same as they are today. 78% of the air or dry air is nitrogen, N2, 21% is oxygen, O2, of the remaining 1%, 0.9% is argon, and the other remaining gases include carbon dioxide at a concentration of 0.037%. The Earth's earliest atmosphere. Theories about what was in the Earth's early atmosphere and how the atmosphere was formed have changed and developed over time. Evidence for the early atmosphere is limited because of the time scale of 4.6 billion years. At this time, the Earth's surface was molten and there is very little fossil record or geological record of this time, which was called the Hadean period, was literally as hot as hell. Hades being the Greek for hell. So the oldest rocks that we have are 4.2 billion years old and they give us some clue about the earliest atmosphere. As the earth cooled and the evolution of the earth's atmosphere has changed over time from being almost carbon dioxide to 0.035% today. We can see even though oxygen makes up 21% of the atmosphere it's only really been in existence for the last billion years. We can also see that nitrogen has gradually increased in composition of the Earth's atmosphere over the last four billion years and in the last billion to 500 million years has increased significantly. What we're going to look at is how this has changed. So one theory suggests that during the first billion years of the Earth's atmosphere there was an intense volcanic activity that released gases formed the early atmosphere consisting of carbon dioxide, water vapour which condensed to form the oceans, methane and ammonia which reacted eventually with oxygen to form nitrogen and water. At the start of this period the Earth's atmosphere may have looked like Mars and Venus today consisting of mainly carbon dioxide and little or no oxygen gas. So what has changed the Earth's atmosphere compared to Mars and Venus? Well, we know today that volcanoes produce lots of carbon dioxide and some nitrogen and lots of water vapour and this water vapour condensed to make liquid water and form the early oceans and seas. When the oceans formed, carbon dioxide would have dissolved into the oceans and ancient marine organisms such as formifora and coral would have eventually taken in the dissolved calcium carbon dioxide to form carbonates, to form their shells and over time these would have been crushed and to form sedimentary rocks such as chalk and limestone and this has reduced the amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere significantly. How did oxygen increase? Algae and plants produced oxygen that is now in the atmosphere by the process of photosynthesis. They took in carbon dioxide and water and sunlight to form glucose and oxygen. Algae first produced oxygen 2.7 billion years ago and soon after oxygen will appeared in the atmosphere. But over the next billion years plants evolved and the percentage of oxygen gradually increased to a level that enabled animals to evolve. How carbon dioxide increased, decreased? Algae and plants decreased the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by the process of photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide was taken in by algae and plants and when they died and they sunk to the bottom of the oceans or ancient seas and they were covered in sediment or sand, it prevented 
a decomposition to occur because the conditions were anaerobic. Over time, over millions of years, and heat and pressure, this plant material was turned into coal, gas and oil. So carbon has been locked in in fossil fuels and in sedimentary rocks. Greenhouse gases. Water vapour, carbon dioxide and methane are all greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases trap heat within the atmosphere and maintain uh, the temperature on Earth high enough to support life. Without them, the planet would be frozen. The, Earth's, uh, the Earth absorbs electromagnetic radiation with short wavelengths, such as visible light, and then re-radiates out as a longer wavelength, infrared radiation. Another name for infrared radiation is heat. This heat is actually, some of this heat is actually absorbed by the carbon dioxide uh, and methane in the atmosphere and it traps that heat and re-radiates it back to earth and hence keeps the earth warm. Now human activities have contributed to an increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Some human activities increase the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. For example, burning fossil fuels and deforestation. The evidence has been collated by scientists in a peer-reviewed evidence. This is where scientists publish their ideas and other scientists, their peers, review their evidence, carry out the same test to see if they get the same results. Scientists release papers that shows their evidence and attend conferences to talk about their evidence. And if enough scientists believe that the evidence is fact, that they accept that this is actually causing uh, global warming and resulting in climate change. It's difficult to model complex systems such as global weather and climate change. And it has been criticised as simplified models and speculations and opinions presented in the media may be based on any parts of the evidence which may be biased. Global climate change. An increase in the average global temperature is a major cause of climate change. There are several potential effects of climate change, from changes in rain and snow patterns, more frequent and stronger storms, bleaching of coral, rising sea levels, warmer ocean which can affect biodiversity, changes in plant life cycles, thawing of permafrost and tundra, more droughts and wildfires, higher temperatures and more heat waves, changes in animal life cycles, and of course melting of snow caps and glaciers. Carbon footprint and its reduction. Carbon footprint is the total amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases emitted over the full life cycle of a product or service and event. We all have one. The carbon footprint can be reduced by reducing emission to carbon dioxide and methane. Atmospheric pollutants from fuels. The combustion of fuels is a major source of atmospheric pollutants. Most fuels, including coal, contain carbon and or hydrogen and also may contain sulphur. When we burn sulphur as a primary pollutant on oxides of nitrogen, they can react with water to form secondary pollutants such as sulfuric acid and nitric acid, which causes acid rain. When the gases are released into the atmosphere when a fuel is burned, they may include carbon dioxide and water vapour, carbon monoxide, which is tox toxic, sulphur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen. Solid particles or unburnt hydrocarbons can also be released that form pollutants in our atmosphere. Carbon monoxide is a toxic gas. It's colourless and odourless and so is not easily detected. It binds to the red blood cells and stops them from carrying oxygen. Sulphur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen can cause respiratory problems in humans and cause acid rain. Particularly it's caused global dimming and health problems for humans.